Hi everyone. In this section, we are going to discuss about the bending test on wood and beam using UTM. The aim is to study the behavior of timber beam under point load and to find out the maximum deflection of the beam under loading, maximum bending stress developed with the beam, that is modulus of rupture and Young's modulus of the material. The patterns used here are universal testing machine, bending tool, scale, dial gauge with stand. Okay, regarding UTM that we have already seen in detail during the previous experiment, it mainly consists of two unit, one control panel and the loading frame unit. This loading frame unit mainly consists of upper crosshair, mobile crosshair and a table and this top portion is used for tension test and this bottom portion is used for compression test. Our test is carried out in this portion only, this compressive portion only. Okay, now regarding other equipments that we have seen during the procedure, now coming to theory, actually what is meant by a beam? A may, beam is a structural member that we can see in buildings, bridges, etc. It's a structural member which carry loads acting on it, which carries load acting on it through the action of bending. Okay, suppose we are considering a simply supported beam. When a load is acting on this structure, what will happen? It will try to resist this load by the action of bending okay by the action of bending this venting can be denoted in terms of deflection delta okay this deflection which is depend upon many factors okay when a load is acting on a particular structure it will react or resist this load through the action of bending and this bending is depend upon many factors like the type of materials that we have used the shape of the beam the type of support condition and type of loading etc. So it is very important to study the effect of bending on a particular beam. Okay, in this case we are considering only a simply supported beam with central loading as we can see in this figure and the deflection under the load is given by the equation usually given by the equation W L cube divided by 48 EI. Okay, so the deflection under the center or the point load acting on it delta is given by the equation w l cube divided by 48 ei where w is the load acting on the structure l is the span of the beam is the modulus of elasticity of the wood and i is the moment of inertia of cross section and which is given as pd cube by 12 why in this case we are using a rectangular wooden beam so in the case of a rectangular section as we studied in mechanics for a rectangle section, the moment of inertia is I is equal to BD cube divided by 12. So, using this delta value or deflection value, we can find out the value of E, modulus of elasticity E by rearranging E as WL cube divided by 48 into delta I. So, as we examine this equation, we can see that L and I are constant here. So, in order to find w and delta or w by delta that is stiffness stiffness means load required to produce a unit deflection in order to find out the effect of stiffness we will perform the bending test and draw a graph using the values obtained in bending test that is load on the y axis and deflection on the x axis using this uh, using the values that we have obtained in the bending test we will draw a curve w by delta curve deflection curve and using the initial portion of the curve we will find out the slope of this graph okay as we all know that when a member is subjected to bending what will happen initially it will obey Hooke's law that will that is it is linear after that what will happen it will reach a particular portion then after that the load will decrease and the failure will occur okay using this initial portion we will find out the slope that is slope means w by delta and substituting in this equation we can find out the modulus of elasticity e now we want to find out modulus of rupture okay modulus of rupture actually means the maximum bending stress developed in the beam modulus of rupture or maximum bending stress developed in the beam that we can find out using the bending equation or theory of symbol bending. Okay, theory of symbol bending is the relation of 
m by i equal to f by i. Okay, m means the maximum bending moment. In the case of a singly supported beam with a central point load, the maximum bending moment is w l by 4 and i is the moment of inertia that is pdq by 12. Then f is the bending stress or modulus of rupture and y is the distance from the neutral axis of the fiber section. Okay, using this relation, we can find out the value of f. We can rearrange this equation in terms of f pass. f is equal to m into y divided by i. But we know that i by y, that is i by y, we are usually denoted as z, that is section modulus. So we can rearrange the equation f is equal to what m by z, where z is the section modulus. In the case of a rectangular section, the section modulus z is equal to bd square by 6. So Using this relation, we can find out the bending stress. Okay. Coming to the procedure. Initially, we will clean the specimen and measure the initial dimension, breadth, depth and length. Then, our next step is to find out the load range on UTM. As we all know that, there are mainly three load ranges in UTM. So, in order to fix our load range, we have to calculate the maximum expected load. Okay. So, we can calculate the maximum expected load W max using the equation or relation that we have seen here that is F is equal to using the relation F is equal to M by Z. We can find out the maximum expected load from the equation M is equal to W L by 4 into F into Z. Okay. So, Usually, we are assuming the modulus of rupture of a timber beam is 75 Newton per mm square. So, by substituting W max is equal to F into M, we can find out the W max here and likewise we can fix the load range. Now, we are going to performing the bending test. For performing the bending test, a bending tool is used which is mainly consist of a loading pointer and a supporting device. Okay, as we can see in this figure, in order to perform the bending test, we are using a bending tool. Okay, this one is the bending tool. These two are the bending tools. Uh, this first one is, is a loading pointer and this one is the supporting device. Okay, this loading pointer is used to apply the point load on this specimen. And the supporting is used to support the specimen at the selected span. So, initially, we will fix the loading pointer to the bottom of the middle cross section head of the UTM. And then we will mount the supporting uh, device on the bottom platform of the UTM. Then, after fixing this loading pointer and the supporting device, we will place the specimen. Then, by using uh, bottom platform, we will lift the specimen and coming make to contact in with this loading pointer. Okay. Then we will adjust the dial uh, pointer to zero. Then what will happen in order to find out the deflection? We will fix the dial gauge. Like this. This one will this one show the dial gauge. We will fix the dial gauge at the base table in order to measure the deflection on the due to the load okay uh, the enlarged view is shown here okay we will fix the dial gauge at the base of the plate in, in contact with the specimen in order to measure the deflection on the b now we will adjust the load pointers to uh, to zero and also the dial gauges to zero now uh, we will operate the machine go on increase by go on on increasing the load and not on the corresponding dial gauge reading for various values of load within the elastic limit. After the uh, elastic limit, we will remove the dial gauges and not down the breaking load and final deflection. Okay, then after that, what we will have to do? We will plot the load deflection graph with load along y axis and deflection along x axis. The slope of the straight line gives W by delta from which we will calculate the E value modulus of elasticity and also corresponding to the modulus of rupture using the relation m max divided by z that we have already explained in 
theory part okay coming to the observation and calculation initially we will find out the dimensions of the specimen that is length breadth and depth then from that values we will calculate the area of cross section and corresponding modulus of section uh, modulus of section or section modulus using the equation is that is equal to bd square by 6 then uh, our before performing the test we have to calculate the maximum expected load and corresponding load range uh, using the formula the m max is equal to wl by 4 that is uh, f into is sir then after performing the test, we have to note down the breaking load W in kilonewton and the maximum deflection in the gauge, dial gauge and corresponding calculation or table load and corresponding deflection is given in this table that we have to calculate. Usually, the load that is given in terms of kilonewton is denoted from 0 to particular load at an interval of 0 1 2 kilo newton like this and the dial gauge re reading usually we are reading as in terms of division number of division that is in terms of 25 95 like this then we have to find out the actual deflection by multiplying this number of divisions into one division or least count of the dial gauge usually the least count is 0 0.01 so Initially, we will note down the load and corresponding dial gauge reading in terms of number of division. And from the number of division, we will find out the actual deflection by multiplying it with least count. Okay. Then, we will draw the load deflection curve using this chart and calculate the corresponding Young's modulus E using the relation WL cube divided by 48 into delta I. From that, uh, w by delta we will get from the graph then after finding young of young's modulus e we will find out the modulus of rupture or maximum bending stress using the equation f is equal to m by e z okay i hope all of you understood the problem experiment if you have any doubt please contact us thank you